Okay. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Tavola Aperta. Uh, this is uh, one of the special projects that uh, this year's curator, Christine Marcel, who we have the pleasure and the honor to have with us uh, today, created for uh, this year's uh, 57th International Art Exhibition. It is an occasion to have a very informal and convivial conversation with the artists to talk about uh, uh, their practice and their artwork exhibited here. Uh, I want to welcome all our guests, uh, also our president, uh, who is here with us today. Um, and especially I want to welcome uh, our main guest today, who is Ernesto Neto. Uh, so thank you for coming. Um, you are exhibiting this year um, here in the Corderia of the Arsenale, and your work is the work that introduces the Pavilion of the Shamans. Uh, and it is also uh, sort of uh, the background for the end of the Pavilion of Tradition, linking these two uh, themes of the exhibition. So I will ask maybe Christine uh, to tell us a bit uh, uh, maybe later about the Pavilion of the Shamans and why she chose uh, that place uh, for Ernesto's work at the beginning of the pavilion as an introduction. But I would first uh, like to start by uh, asking you about the title of your work. Um Sagrado Lugar, a sacred uh, place. Uh, so can you tell us something about the title, about the meaning of the title as an introduction to the work you're exhibiting? Um Sagrado Lugar, um Sagrado um Sagrado Lugar, um Sagrado Lugar is where we are. Is where we are, where we are. Is um sagrado lugar, a sacred place where I am, a sacred place where we are. We are in the earth, we are alive. There is a heart inside of us. This heart expresses energy, this heart receives energy, um sagrado lugar é aqui, um sagrado lugar, it's here, together with you, we are together in this sacred planet, sagra gra gra, do 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 lugar, É a vida, é a vida, is life, life, everything is alive, everything is alive, the sun, the moon, the earth, all the cosmos, everything inside of us, the microbes, the little atoms, the particles, the life, light, dark, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, light, dark, light, sagrado lugar, is the place we are, is the place we are, when we are, when we are, when we are clean, about um, a lot of thinkings, about everything, just feeling the being, just feeling the air, the air around um sagrado lugar. A sacred place is where where we are, you know. Uh, the fact that we are alive, it's something that millions of spermatozoids, our brothers, were trying to get in that ovulo, and we got there. And we are here, alive, now in this table, sometimes somewhere, sometimes here. So it's a place to be. It's a place to find ourselves in, in communion, in contact to everything around 
to the animals, to the air, to the light, to the dark, to the people, uh, to exchange, sometimes even without words, just being together, singing together, dancing together, uh, clapping hands together. Je vais renverser. Je vais renverser. <rire> Gratitude. <rire> Gratitude. <rire> A wonderful introduction. <rire> So it's something that uh, I can think about. This all had been un sagrado lugar. It all had been a sacred place because it's a place that we are exchanging. The idea that we have in the West is the sacred it uh, became kind of far from us. But the sacred is everywhere, you know, all the time, in between us, living with us, you know. Every step we do, I, I was used to say, when we wake up, uh, I wake up and I step on the poetry. It's weird because you say step looks like that you're hurting the poetry. But there's another way. You step and you get in in the poetry. You wake up and you get in in the poetry. Another day is coming and we are moving around and we are going everywhere. And there is poetry everywhere around. For an artist, the poetry is everywhere. It's not just on the artwork. It's not just on the other's artwork or on the culture or uh, on the books. Uh, the poetry is in the way that this camera is looking to us, uh, that light is spreading out over there. Uh, 
something that begin to fly away with the wind, you know, how one thing are together with the other. Sometimes we will stop, for example, this, uh, how do we call that? Mm -hmm. uh, dead nature? Is that like that? This, this kind of paintings? <laughs> it's dead nature, you say? Natureza morta. Still, still life, yeah. I knew that was different in English. <laughs> <laughs> so if you begin to look that, and you stop looking, it begins to get different. Every time, as more you get into it, the stronger it becomes. That's what happens when you begin to painting, when a painting is doing painting in something that they are seeing. You begin to see and you don't see anymore exactly what is it and what is not. But it becomes the colors and everything is mixed. So it's that, that's what's going on in the, in the society. When we get like, like uh, relax and we begin to see the things, you begin to see the things with different dimensions that is not really touchable or even explainable by our intellect, by, our, by these dynamics uh, of this uh, dialectic. Now, our mind, uh, it has, uh, is very powerful, you know, uh, but that is, the thinking has some limits that, uh, uh, that our intuition can breathe sometimes that we can't really see is also part of our mind, of our body, of our everything. That's what we call sometimes uh, spiritual. Now, some things that we can't really uh, see, but we can feel. Yes. Um. So, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, can you tell us about the space you, uh, you sort of built here in the Arsenale, uh, uh, the installation? Um, because um, a lot of, uh, most of your uh, um, investigation in art is about our relationship to nature, but which here is informed uh, a lot by the Hunikuin and their culture. So, can you tell us uh, a bit more uh, about the installation in the Corderia? So, uh, like uh, a little bit more than four years ago, uh, I went to the forest with a friend of mine named Anna, who had been invited oh, to be... Four years ago. Forest, four years, yeah, four and a half. Four years. Yeah. I heard 14. No, no, four <laughs> years. <laughs> Sorry. Four to four years. Uh, in 12, 13, I or 2013. And then I... <laughs> and they begin to say to me that the sacred is everywhere, you know? And this touch, all this feeling that I have from the art scene since a long time. And then uh, I get b uh, just, let's say, swollen by their chants, you know, completely absorbed by that, uh, swallow, <laughs> by the boa, let's say. And the, and when I came back, I went to a ritual in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, I, I had some rituals there where we drink their sacred medicine, Nishipan. And when I arrived in Rio de Janeiro, uh, I had a ritual with a guy named Fabiano Chanabane. And two days after, I met him again. And I was supposed to have an uh, exhibition. Well, I talk a lot with him. And I was preparing an exhibition at the Guggenheim. And he said, uh, I said to him, man, I would like to do this dance on the opening. It was a dance. We did a dance that everybody was. Uh, like the turtle dance, and I wanted to make something, I said something like that, which is the boa dance. I didn't even know about the boa dance. And he said, let's do it together. And that's how our relationship began in this, uh, in this Guggenheim, I mean, through the, the rituals and everything, but in the, at the Guggenheim, we did this meeting there, and Chanabane came with his father, Sian, who is uh, being uh, the main leader of this area of the Hunikuin. And his cousin, 
Ayani, who is an incredible woman who sings beautiful, and and who paint the losang, the kuna, uh, in the center of the piece. She did that painting <coughs> with her family, and. Yeah, and what's beautiful, we made a ritual inside of the museum. Uh, uh, Ernesto, wh why did they agree actually to uh, leave uh, Amazonia with you and to go into a museum in New York? In New York, no, it was in, in Bilbao. Or in Bilbao. I mean, they didn't agree, they invited me to do it. He said, let's do it together. That was their idea at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. He said that. I think he, uh, that was. Uh, a desire of expansion, a desire of get the world, you know. They want to uh, have a conversation with the world. Because once you told me uh, that uh, actually you didn't ask them to uh, join, it's more them who said, we feel the world is sick now, so we should try to heal and go with you to... No, this is uh, another thing. This is a kind of a prophecy uh, mm. from old shamans uh -huh. that uh, uh, they said, uh, it's not just happened with the Huni Kuin, but uh, uh, they said that at some point uh, they would need to open their medicines to the world to heal the world. You mean with different tribes of Amazonia? Well, at least with the Yawanawa and the Huni Kuin, mm. yes. And uh, that's what they, that's what I heard, no? and that's what they say, you know. Uh, they say that this is the time, Shinabana, mm -hmm. to, to open to the world. And that's what they are doing, you know. I, mean, I am just one, one piece on this mm -hmm. uh, movement. Uh, it just happened to be like that because of that. It's not uh, because of myself or because of them. It's the energy of the earth. You know, there is a transition going on in the society. Uh, we hope uh, this transition happens to, to survive, mm -hmm. now because there is a strong force against all of it, yeah, against this transformation, against this organism that is the earth, yeah, this collectiveness that is uh, spreading out, the organic food, you know, uh, the conscience that we are having about what we've been doing here, because uh, finally, you know, a, a hundred years ago, we were excited about the development, the technology, everything, futurism here in Italy, futurism. You know, we <laughs> were futurists as a human being, our ancestors. You know, I, I, I got something, I received a message, very interesting. Uh, it's a kind of picture that uh, we, ha we have two grandfathers, uh, two fathers and mothers, no? two parents, four grandfathers and grandmothers, eight grand-grand, or 16, yes, uh, uh, 16, <laughs> uh, 16, and then it goes, I don't know, to 32, and in the end, it's like he, in, in 11 generations, there is direct ancestors for us, 4,000 people, 4,094 is the right name. I have the picture here, I can send to you after, or to anybody who wants to see. So this is incredible, this is 300 years. So let's say 100 years ago, we were like super excited about the future. And now we are very much afraid about what we, be, we are doing in, in this planet, you know. Uh, so I think uh, that's a little bit what is going on. Uh, and then are these people who have this relation with nature. And nature is what we are. Yeah? And nature is what is kind of saying, my God, what's going on? What you guys are doing? So I think that's a little bit what's going on is a... Is a is the whole energy of this planet making this happen, making this uh, uh, movement of indigenous people, shamanism, or whatever you want to call, you know. This thing of shamanism is something that, uh, for me, uh, brings a lot of uh, mix of ideas, you know. What we wanted to, to bring here was much more this spirit, scientific spirit that they have, you know, because uh, they are researchers, you know, the, the knowledge that these guys have about plants are something incredible, but is a different knowledge, not touchable by the, by the, uh, by the intellect. For example, know. in the installation, you have this uh, sculptural 
element in the center of the tent. Uh, and actually, it's very close to the structure of the DNA. Mm, and you actually, it's the structure of the DNA. Actually, we met together uh, an Italian scientist who, who was a specialist of the AIDS virus, who was uh, looking at your piece and was saying, but that's the DNA, you remember? And that's a very uh, mysterious way that uh, th this Indian, this Uniquin, that they have designed without any scientific this, this approach, is, the this DNA this is structure, not a, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is not exactly uh, from the Uniquin. Uh, the uh, DNA is from nature, is every inside of all of yeah, us, of including course, yeah, only yeah. the Huni Queen. The Huni Queen, they would not uh, think about nature. But if you think about the boa yeah. drawing, you know, the, the mm -hmm. in and out from the boa drawing, this is a little bit what happens when you, when you have a stair twisted the like the DNA. Structure. You know, that's the structure of the boa. If you think about Brancusi and Les sculpture, it has this structure too. Uh, and there is a there is a guy. Uh, oh, anyway, <laughs> let's maybe not get in on, on this uh, other <laughs> other road. <laughs> but uh, uh, this uh, question of the DNA comes from a book from uh, the the Cosmic Serpent and the or Origins of the Knowledge and the DNA. The mm -hmm. concept sample the DNA and the origin of the knowledge from, what's his name? I don't know. Jeremy Malby. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he went to the uh, Ashaninka people and he had the uh, ayahuasca <laughs> with them and he saw the bow was going up. And you know, I, you, you can't discuss spirituality on the anthropology because they are kind of scientific and you cannot really science that. And uh, he went to Brazil in Night 2 and he saw uh, all this spirituality on the Echo Night 2 and he began to. Uh, He began to, to, he saw all of it, and he uh, went back to his uh, uh, country, I think Switzerland, and he fly back saying, you know, if I want to study the indigenous, I need to study spirituality, because that's the most important thing to them. And he began to study it, uh, and he find out, I mean, you can read the book, but uh, he find out this structure that on the DNA, uh, the image is about two boas going up and a staircase in the middle. In every uh, ancestor story, you have a staircase uh, transition or, or a rope. On the Huni Queen, it's a rope. It's not a staircase. Mm -hmm. uh, and, or you, uh, and you have the boa, serpents, everywhere, even on the Jewish-Christian tradition, as everybody knows. Now, the serpent get br brought light to humanity because if there was not the serpent, Adam and Eva will be there till today and we are not to be here. So uh, the, what's happened with this situation, and that's I wanted to bring this uh, image to, the, to the, the piece to have some kind of connection between this universe, this spiritual dimension of the Huni Queen and other indigenous people from Amazon to a kind of I intelligible uh, uh, practices of the science, a meeting uh, between one and the others. And what's happened is that uh, our DNA, we understand, science understands 20% of our DNA. 80% of our DNA is not understandable, is not knowledgeable, you know? And, and the science calls it junk DNA. Can you believe that 80% of our DNA, the magic cell, the magic no, is not even a cell, no, the magic structure uh, who gives life for us, who has four amino acids, you know. <laughs> has four 
uh, amino acid gives all the genetic code, 8% of it is not understandable, and we call it junk DNA. And I received a message that some Russian people are studying that, this junk DNA, and is discovering that is where the intuition is, where the everything around spiritu spirituality is on this 8% DNA. So this is the situation that we are. There is a kind of knowledge that these guys are very much advanced on it, and in my understanding, it's good to hear them. And did your practice as an artist change when you uh, went to the Uni Queen? Because uh, sh we should remember also you were at the Biennale of Harald Zeman uh, 20 years ago and with a very beautiful work uh, that was here in this uh, room where Alicia Kfade uh, made his, her sculpture. And uh, it was more a sensorial environment without this uh, communal and more spiritual dimension. So I'm wondering, uh, even if I know that it's something has happened and, and I can see it, uh, from your point of view, how your practice has changed through the, this experience with them? <laughs> you cannot answer, of course. No, I, I can't. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, really, it's difficult to explain in a way, right? Yeah, you know, the last, uh, in 2001, we had a piece here named El Bicho, what means that's the animal. Uh, I came here and I wanted to make uh, Harold asked me to do a piece of spice piece. Harald Zeman, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was like, maybe I think about doing something else. When I saw the room, I realized it should be a spice piece. But I could not put hooks in any part of the wall. And I could not... Manuela, you remember? Huh? <laughs> she was there to help you to make the piece. Yeah, we met <laughs> each other there. <laughs> No, no hook, no nails, nothing. nothing like that. And I went back to Brazil and I asked, I was calling my wife and I said to her, oh, I cannot put hooks, nails, and she said, oh, how are you going to do that? And I said, I don't know, but I believe that tomorrow morning I'm going to have the answer. And the answer came tomor uh, tomorrow morning, I mean, that day, which was to close, put two fabrics together and close it to each other. When you have one fabric is stretched, on the whole uh, ceiling, like we fish in the time, the piece I did in Livia Biennale, and the drops falling down, you had a landscape. When you close that and let it fall down, you have uh, a body. It's like if you have a line or if you have a circle. In mathematics, topologically, this is closed, this is open. Now you have this binary thing, you have sometimes to in and out, I mean to... Uh, play or not, you have that. No? So, I have been doing animals all my life, you know. There is this relation to animals, to the body, to the ideas, you know, simplifying the body to feel that. And... But what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> it was an impossible question, but... Ah, uh, the change on my work. What's happened is that uh, uh, my work in this, uh, uh, since then, begin to have a lot of work uh, engaging people to be together in the place, to be together like we are together in this table. And what I saw there, you know, it's a society where they have incredible equilibrium balance uh, in between them socially, uh, uh, incredible uh, connection to nature, and they talk about all the time about healing. And uh, the thing that is, it took uh, many long time, like eight months and many uh, rituals night, uh, because we have rituals in Rio de Janeiro made by them. You know, this movement to connect to the society had begun long time ago with the father of Fabiano Cian. He began that making movies. And then Fabiano, when he was 17, he went to Rio de Janeiro, he began to make rituals in Rio de Janeiro. And he's doing that since in 13 years. Uh, so 
with many rituals, I realized that we need to heal all the time because for them, the negative energy is coming to us all the time, putting us in a bad thinking, in a different direction. And uh, and on this, on this, uh, on my work, you know, what really changed on my work is that I begin to get very difficult to me to work with plastic material, you know. That is the most strong thing. Uh, I even have an exhibition uh, in Barcelona, like something like two weeks ago or three, and I was supposed to make the floor with a cotton, uh, like a futon material, and we didn't have time to have it because, you know, the piece the took time to come. And I decided to use the polyurethane. And I was in the room when the polyurethane began to arrive. <laughs> I just couldn't make it. I just couldn't use it. I just couldn't be there with that. And that's what I... That's what, what is the most, uh, the biggest change on it, mm. you know. And then we begin this uh, work with the Huni uh, in at the Guggenheim in Bilbao. Then we had uh, another room uh, with the brother of Fabiano uh, Leopardo in São Paulo at the exhibition named uh, in the, uh, Mixed Stories, Miscellaneous Stories. Uh, as a group show about the African, indigenous, and Portuguese inherity on the art in Brazil. And then we had the, a exhibition in Germany at the Arp Museum in Stuttgart. Uh, where the, the people from Stuttgart, they went to the opening in Bilbao and they met Fabiano and Sian and, and Ayani and Kati. Kati is the wife of Fabiano, who is a uh, German. And they begin to talk to each other. And in the day after, when we have a meeting with the people from, from Stuttgart, they talk about some of the Hunikin and said, ah, are you interested in them? And they said, no, I'm interested in the bracelets and necklace. Ah, okay. And then one week later, they said, we would like to take sweet edge to the exhibition, I said, but the sweet edge includes the Huni Queen. Yes, that's what we want. And they, they talk with Kachi, they organized that. We organized to go, Fabiano, Sian, and Tima. And we have this kind of uh, uh, ceremony without ayahuasca, uh, because it was a public place. For the people, it was very amazing, you know. Uh, we sing there and give hands, dance. And it was very incredible, uh, the reaction that they had. Uh, we felt the healing happening uh, all around. And then... Ayahuasca is this drink, right? Ayahuasca is a mix between... A, it's a sacred medicine. It's the sacred medicine for the Huni Queen. It's, and for the Ashaninka, and for the Yawanawa, Nukini, a lot of, uh, of communities in the west of Amazon. Uh, that's how, in a way, they do their science, you know. It's uh, through the ayahuasca, they connect to this high dimension, spiritual dimension of the planet, the nature, ourself, in connection to all of it. It teaches us, uh, shows directions. And the... And the. Uh, to, to raise yeah. the yeah. Let me taste that. <coughs> oh. Thank you. Do you yes. want to go on? Yes, I wanted to ask you a question, mm. if that's okay. Um, yeah, your, your process in relationship to recognizing indigenous populations and this beautiful gift of the medicine in relationship to your work and bringing that as your contribution here, uh, 
personally, it's uh, very humbling to experience and this idea of very naturally bringing people together in this environment. I mean, yes, it's a biennial and we all come to view the exhibits, but there's something that occurs within your practice that's very generous, but it's not this sort of like us against them, I'm the artist and you're the viewer. It's You're opening up to another understanding of how to experience art. And, and I believe, and please, this is my question, and I'm wondering if you could maybe <clears throat> touch a little bit more on this relationship that you have with the Huni Queen in, in regard to your practice. I mean, I know you've been talking about it, but in terms of how do you manage to invite this very specific and beautiful exchange in exposing your relationship to this process, uh, how do you invite them into this environment? And so I think that for me is the, is the, is the artistic form, is, is bridging, you're bridging a gap between cultures but then also subcultures within that frame. And, and you're doing it, you, you're doing it in my opinion. Uh, you know, you make it look easy, but I think that that's the, that's the art in it, right? I mean, does this make sense, this question? Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Got it, this is. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Beautiful. This is a love story, you know. That's the, the thing, you know, it's something that is much more, is much beyond uh, the question of bringing one culture to another culture and everything. It's something that he absolutely swallowed my whole life. Uh, God. Community building, it's relationships, yeah, it's, but yeah. it's so much, so much more, like you say, love yeah, and light and healing and, yeah. <laughs> it takes you because well, I, I don't make that material. No. In, in reality, I just trying to be together, you know. Uh, but it, it's very uh, complicated to to be here in a place like a Biennale with them, you know, and everything, because the force of the West here is so strong, you know, and the uh, and the values are so different. The energy is so heavy sometimes. That is quite uh, complex because it's uh, it's about this thing of being together. You know, as you said, there is uh, other culture. I am making a bridge, uh, as we do in Rio de Janeiro. When you ask the people, and when you, we, me, and uh, friends that I became friends, these people who are since 13 years uh, having rituals of the Huni Queen in Rio de Janeiro uh, is a kind of a cultural bridge, you know. But then you have the ritual, and the people drink the medicine, and the medicine teaches the thing. The chants, the Huni Queen chants the thing. They are doing the whole thing. They are uh, on, the, on, the, on the, the room, you know, uh, and we are there. You don't need to, I mean, it's good to have a very good room, very well organized, but the art is the spirit around that, happening around there. So when you try to make a uh, uh, sculpture, you know, in the end of the day, this is a development of a sculpture of mine, you know, engaging people, uh, you have a net, textile, things that I've been working since many years. Uh, but uh, there is this kind of a room, a circle room, being a circle. Uh, there is a situation on the art that is this thing, uh, uh, in the society we live, as more untouchable one thing are, more valorized it is. Isn't it? Untouchable person, uh, untouchable piece, uh, protected by a glass because it values a lot of money, let's say. So creating barriers, you create uh, value on the things. When you open the barriers, it's a different thing, you know. You create a space for the people to meet each other. And this is the relation of the art for the indigenous 
also for the Africans. And this is very strong in Brazilian culture. It's not by chance that we had Ligia Clark, Eloit Sica, and Ligia Pap. Because if you think about the samba, samba would be a table like that, maybe smaller, this is a quite big table, and people were playing the guitar, sometimes people playing the drums, some people uh, stand up playing also some drums, and playing, chik -chik -chik -chik, playing dishes, playing like we were playing together here, and people would be around dancing, and everybody would be together making it happen. If you think about Hunikuin, Every, or indigenous, everybody would be in the circle, everybody would be together, or it would be in a line, or different uh, structures, but we, uh, normally everybody is together doing that thing together. You don't have the position, oh, the artist, you know, <laughs> that situation. Everybody is an artist. When I, when I came down, you know, when I arrived there the first time, I want to go back. The day after, I was here. What I am doing here with these guys, you know, maybe take me out of here. I got even kind of panic, you know. And then my friend, no, Ernesto, take here. I didn't know where I was going, you know, uh, because a friend of mine, uh, sh she went there two years before for, to re make the book, and she said, you need to meet the shamans, you need to make the pages, you need to make the pages. You should, and one day she was going there with the prototype of the book, and she said to me, I'm going there, let's go. I said, yeah, let's go, sure, let's make the, make the pages. And, uh, and uh, and I, she sent two links for me about the Huni Queen, you know. I, you know, I read about uh, uh, Eduardo Viveiro de Castro, it's incredible, about perspectivism and this intellectual uh, trying to understand what is uh, because what is uh, the perspectivism from Eduardo Verucati, we've tried to, in two lines, trying to a little bit explain, is that what is objective for us is subjective for the indigenous, and what is subjective for us is objective for them. If you want to, we want to get close to, uh, to explain something you, in, our, in our society, you need to be as more objective you can. For the indigenous, you need to be the most subjective as you can. So, whew, this is, so, I, I, uh, that's what, I, she sent two links, I didn't even open the links, I looked where was it, the little city Jordan, and I went there by plane, and they were all, a lot of tension because of the book, doing that, la 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 la, and then we went to the tribe, and it's quite poor there, you know, there is a lot of difficulties because there is boat, there is people, dra they, 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 it's the first thing. <laughs> Oh my God, my God. It's, it's my life, you know, I don't know, uh, it's crazy what's going on, it's much more than, but let's go. <laughs> uh, you know, they wear no clothes a long time ago, and then you, you need to wear, wear clothes because now nah, white people come there and say, oh, you need to wear, wear clothes, this is dirty to get naked, you know, come on, blah, 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 they had become slaves, you know, since many years because of the rubber state, yeah, they, they had been, uh, so their culture, they, 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 they couldn't or not sing, they couldn't speak their language, they couldn't uh, make their parties, make their rituals. So the process to get the land back on the 70s by the father of Sian, the grandfather of uh, Chanabane, who is this guy, yeah, my friend, uh, he uh, began the movement to get the land. He was the guy, Suero, who began this movement. <laughs> and the guy, and at the same point, they begin to brought the culture back. And this guy who made the book, uh, uh, Agostinho e Camuru, he went to the Ashaninka, drink the medicine, and the medicine said to him, uh, where is your culture? Talk about your culture, where is your culture? He went inside of the jungle where people uh, uh, got able to run away from the rubber state to become slavery and all of it and begin to get it back. And through their culture, they begin to get energy. And this structure of expanding their culture, they see as a protection for them too. And so, uh, so I was there in this situation uh, I don't know where, where I was, <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, are there any questions from, does anybody, yeah, please. 
sorry. Two questions. Uh, the two I, questions. I, I don't speak very, very well English, so I'd like to uh, talk in Portuguese. It's possible. Uh, uh, yeah, I can translate. Uh, <laughs> Eu, queria, eu gostaria de te perguntar, eu sou de Belém e eu já participei de alguns rituais de Santo Daime lá na Amazônia e eu gostaria de te perguntar se, como tu vês essa possibilidade de troca realmente numa, de uma forma compartilhada, de, de, até de uma forma horizontal, pensando, por exemplo, na situação dos índios atualmente no Brasil que estão... Espera aí, let me... Uh... É, deixa eu traduzir um pouquinho, porque senão vai ser tá. difícil falar tudo. É, a, é, como é que é o seu nome? Elaine. É, meu no, my name is Elaine. I am from the Santo Daime. The Santo Daime is a church, a kind of syncretic é, spiritual é, group who had é, from Acre, from the state of these guys that we are talking about, in Amazon. É, you want to ex... Ah, não, you don't... <laughs> Na verdade, eu não sou do Santo Daime. Eu já participei de alguns rituais. She had participated in some rituals from Santo Daime. But let me explain a little bit about the Santo Daime. Vou explicar um pouquinho o Santo Daime, porque o Santo Daime é bem importante nessa história toda. Você pode explicar. Você pode explicar. Você quer dizer qual é essa pergunta, então? Ah, eu queria te perguntar, assim... É, se tu acha, como tu vês essa forma de compartilhar, achei super interessante a gente estar discutindo o sagrado aqui, né, nessa mesa e nesse evento. E, assim, queria te perguntar se tu achas que a gente, como mesmo nós brasileiros, que não somos brancos, mas que não somos também indígenas, se a, se a gente está numa condição de troca, como é que isso se dá? Assim, se tu, como tu vês essa troca? Já que o Brasil está tirando as terras dos indígenas, vão haver yeah. hidroelétricas e tudo isso. Enfim, é uma questão. Okay. Yeah, it's a very important question. Uh, how, uh, what she feels is how we can make this exchange. We are Brazilian, that's not so white, but also uh, quite far from the indigenous. Even though the first mother in Brazil is indigenous, you know, and the second is African. But uh, and and a lot of people had born because it uh, was uh, no, not forbidden for the Portuguese and for, for the French to have sex with indigenous and then Africans like it was in the US, for example. But anyway, uh, how can we uh, be on this bridge? Como é que a gente pode estar nessa ponte, né? Uh, in this moment that even Brazil is uh, cutting a lot of rights from the indigenous people. I mean, it's like the invasion that began 500 years ago. It's continuously, mm. yeah. you know, it never uh, not happened. And this, uh, <coughs> bom, eu estou respondendo em inglês, né? Okay. Tudo I bem? <laughs> And this mix of what I was talking about that I didn't finish, when they, they, they dress, when they dress yeah. a clothes, they need to wash these clothes. They need to wash these clothes, They need to buy the clothes, or they need to make the clothes, uh, and then they begin. Uh, then appears boats with the uh, engine, and they want to have the engine because it's you know begins with the knife, a knife, technology. You know, a knife is much better than the knife that they had before. So the situation that you have uh, when you arrive there is that you have this situation of this uh, enchanted universe. This a uh, balanced society, this medicine, incredible, this connection with nature, and at the same time, you have all these difficulties to deal with all these goods from the West, from the development society, you know. Now, it's phone call, Every, everyone, everybody ha has a telephone, everybody want, has Facebook, everybody wants to exchange pictures, and all of it has a cost, you know. So it's a shock, you know, the shock that happens here, uh, bringing them here and all of it, is a shock for them there all the time, you know. They live on this shock. They live on this shock hardcore, you know. And, and, and this is uh, uh, more or less the situation. How, uh, how is going to be? You're going to create uh, protection for them and let them in the forest, Because if you think about the Huni Queen, one day I was here with a shaman here, and there was two young girls 
who are in São Paulo now, they are painters, you know, uh, one of the little drawings here is from one friend, professor of, of Ben, uh, they are in Rio de Janeiro because we are doing, there is going to be an exhibition in the, in the Itaú Cultural, made by them, you know, about a new book that had been released, a uh, book produced just for them in the forest, about their diets and things like that, for them have it registered and help uh, one to the other. And, and I am, together with Anna, kind of a curator of that. I mean, just organize and let, him, uh, let them do it. But anyway, uh, they are, has a, a much bigger contact with the city. They even more or less live in the city of Jordan. And the other guy, uh, who is a, a kind of doctor, lives inside. And he complains very much about them because they are these people who are much more close to the society. And uh, there is uh, people there who are inside of here who are maybe much more connected to the, to the forest than they are because they are too much connecting to the society. So it's kind of, in a way, we are poison, yeah. you know? But they, they are in a situation that cannot avoid this poison. This poison is there, it's gonna kill everybody. You know, the, the warming is coming up, you know, they are having a lot, a lot of problems about that. You have mining people arriving there, you have... Uh, if people don't begin to understand that th there is a, a valuable thing there, there is a richness there, there is gold, gold are then. Gold is not the mining that's under the earth. Gold are then and their knowledge and what they can uh, help us in the future of our society. This is what I understand, this is what I believe, this is what I feel, you know. This is something. And what's happened, uh, finishing, uh, because there were mixing questions and everything. W you bring, I'm talking about that here, they came here, you know, a lot of people here, you know, places is small, uh, there is a language uh, 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 barrier in, the in, the in, in between, you know, time is short, it's, I don't know, 200 artists in the exhibition, I don't know how, how many thousand people on the opening, it's a crazy thing, it's not like what we had in Kerganet, what we had in Vienna, what we had in other places where you are protected in a way and you can have time to talk, let them sing, let them play, have a ceremony later, you know, uh, we wanted to do a ceremony here, but uh, you can't do the ceremony because the exhibition closed at 8 and nothing can happen after 8, so we didn't want to get in the discussion about that because this is the structure, we don't want to fight. We, uh, this is something that you offer. Oh, there is, there is this glass of water, and this glass of water is very good to drink. If you drink this glass of water, the water is going to tell you a lot of important things. You, dr you drink the water if you want, and our friend there drink the water with the people from the dime, you know, but uh, that's the situation. Agora, if you drink the glass, the glass teaches you, the chance teaches you. It, that's uh, the main point, you know, of the, of the situation. And so uh, what, what, they can, uh, what they can give to this society is this glass. And this glass come with their chance and come with a strong and very deep connection to nature and the nature that's inside of you. So uh, the way you begin to see the world after that becomes very different because you, be you feel really part of nature. You feel uh, roots getting out from your fingers. You feel leaves getting out from your head. You feel uh, uh, roots from your feet, you know. You feel uh, the life inside of you in a certain dimension that, uh, you know, that uh, some collateral effects can happen, for example. I was someone who drink a lot and I don't drink anything al alcoholic anymore. It, not that I think alcohol is bad. Come on, I, I love alcohol for many years. This was uh, something very important for me. But also alcohol is anesthetic, you know. It uh, creates, uh, it's absolutely necessary in the society we live, you know, with all the rules that we are. And, but anyway, uh, I know I was like 15 kilos 
bigger than I am, you know. It, it's something you want to say, what's happened in my life? That's what's happened in my life, you know. And I, uh, uh, they came here yeah, because all of it, to meet, to see uh, how it's possible to have this contact. But as my friend had asked there, the, 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 the possible contact is through their rituals, but not a ritual that you can do in an opening here with thousands of people moving around, a real one. Yes, and there's a second question there. Yes. Uh, thanks very much for your wonderful uh, paraphrases of very many important things. Now, just to get to the core of this, uh, I mean, I had a bit of anesthetic, uh, so uh, we, can, we can discuss it's later very on. good, yeah. Which can actually discuss later on whether it's an anesthetic for culture or for nature or for uh, whatever, yeah. for knowledge. Good. What I wanted to say, whenever this, whenever this discussion comes up with mean, this very important issue of the relation between Western and not Western art, what seems to creep, what seems to creep up at the center of this is this concept of nature. Now, the concept of nature is something I'm fundamentally, fundamentally very unhappy about. For me, it's a very artificial concept, this may sound funny, because you have biology <laughs> on the one hand, and you have culture. And I find it very annoying that in this, in this relation between Western and not Western art, there is this kind of nature, this focus on nature. In biology, we, and the reason why this is important is, it is about something you talked about very much, the relation between the individual and the social. In biology, there is a very clear a very clear basis for the relation between the individual and the social. We need to be social, otherwise we won't survive. Okay? Now, the big, one of the big achievements of culture versus biology, and I leave nature out because for me that's just too ambiguous, is that we have a much more balanced notion between the individual and the social. Okay? So if what you put, you put like this, this, this going back, this social, rediscovering the social relatedness, etc. You could put that back in, in, in nature, and I find that very ambivalent because, number one, we cannot go back. I mean, we are in culture, we are not in nature. We are in biology and we are in culture. Nature is just, gets ri let's get rid of that notion for a serious discussion. Okay. And, that means that we have the, we have the social and we, the major achievement, if you look at the history of Western society and others, the major achievement is to achieve a notion of individual. And that's, that makes the artist different in a shamanistic society from the artist different. That doesn't mean you ignore the social or you ignore whatever social dimensions, but the personal, the individual personal thing is what we have achieved, both in art and in ethics and everywhere, in science, in science and in knowledge. So, this call, f call for, if we all, are, if we are all did rediscover our, ra our roots with nature, I find very, very ambiguous and very, very difficult. Furthermore, I mean, sorry, I'm going to round this off. You could also, of course, say that technology plays the role that shamanistic knowledge plays, uh, plays in, the, in, the, in, in earlier societies. So there is a, a shamanistic dimension to current technology, and I would like, really like to people to explore that, that more and to get into that more. But not around the concept of nature, which for me is, is, is not a good step towards, uh, towards neither towards uh, understanding, the understanding if we want to understand art, nor, nor uh, okay. Yeah, very great to hear you. <laughs> yeah, these, uh, some people they call, when they talk, call the shamanism or uh, the knowledge of the Hunyakuin, they call technology. They say that this technology is very important for our society. I personally don't like very much because I think the name, the word technology is very techno. But there is a technique in the back of it, you know. It's not uh, uh, just, uh, there is intuition, but also there is a structure on making that. What I think in between biology and, and sociology, there is a spirituality. I mean, not even because biology and sociology would be in the same si in the same time in the same size, in the same side. Uh, what happened is that uh, the the idea of nature that we have here is different than the idea of nature that they have. Is it different that the idea of nature that the spiritual people like uh, a monk from from Tibet or from wherever, wherever in Asia? 
can have to. That's what is the, the, the situation. Uh, on, the, on the Greek philosophy that uh, uh, begin this society, no? uh, uh, nature had, put in, had became, become a landscape. You put nature as a place to observe. So when we do that, we put ourselves outside of nature. And then we begin to analyze everything and generate all this technology. What's happened with them is that uh, the type of technology of them, uh, shamanic, whatever you want to call, uh, is never separated nature and, uh, and the, the development, the knowledge on everything that is moving. So this is a key point uh, that your question brings to the time that we are living today. In my understanding, okay, uh, I believe that the Hugni Queen would say so, but the Hugni Queen doesn't discuss very much this kind of uh, uh, discussion that we are having. For them, our society has some sickness that can be cured, can be healed, you know, or not, you know. Some of them think that it's already gone, you know, things are going to be uh, destroyed and there is no... Uh, I'm not talking just about the Hugni Queen now, but what I hear uh, in general. But do we, do we agree that going back to nature is uh, but, uh, it's we not, can go it's we can go in a waste of time for everybody. It's not about uh, going back to nature at all. That's not what he was saying. Uh, no, no, if but we refer, for example, there is a very important book that I would like to quote in this discussion because it's an answer and it's a pretty long answer of 300 pages. So we won't summarize it now. It's the book of Viveros de Castro. Um, uh, about uh, this cannibalism uh, metaphysics and it's really summarizing what nature means for the mm, uniquin which is not what what it means for us uh, in uh, i would say in the european context and uh, in this case of course we it's uh, not about claiming uh, uh, any comeback to anything uh, we know that nature is also somehow an utopia something that um, that is not easy to define anymore <laughs> in uh, opposition to culture. We know that we are beyond this dualism. But in the spirit of the Amazonian, there is no distinction in between, I would say, uh, even if we don't speak uh, precisely about uh, what it is, <laughs> nature and culture or nature and the yeah. human. They have a totally different perspective on their relationship between them and the outside and this is really a very uh, uh, essential point to understand why for them nature has still a sense it's not the nature that we're talking about here in the uh, occidental <laughs> understanding mm. okay there's a question uh, I, 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 it's a very important point Th let me just to, to understand this, what is called uh, the Amerindian yeah, but, uh, perspectivism but that but he was quoting from the beginning. Yeah, I was cutting that. This is great, perspectivism. It's really amazing to read. But the point is that it's not going back to nature. We, we, it's not a question of going back. Uh, we are, we, are not we cannot anyway. <laughs> You know, uh, but that was not the going back was not the point of my intervention. Uh, the, w the point of my intervention was to challenge the concept of nature. And as you uh, as, yeah, yeah, as you that. indeed say about about the Amazonian Indians that perspective is what what they call nature. It's we we should call culture and not nature. Oh yes. yes. Okay, I think we That's have a it. question here. This is what uh, what uh, Vivero de Castro would say. Yeah. Exactly. When they go to the forest, they go to meet their family. The plants are their family like you meet your mother and uh, friends, is, is family. There, there's no uh, separation at all. Yes, please. Still, I do believe that um, uh, while trying to convince me to go back and become a Huni Queen or a member of that world as an exercise to rediscover the truth about the world. Uh, it's true that this is not a relationship between us and nature, but it's, it's a, a problem of relationship between each of us and ourselves. And uh, I'm grateful that you do what you do, although I'm convinced that we cannot go back, but to go forward 
we need to understand there are many eyes in each of us, and one of these eyes belongs to Amazonia, and we cannot avoid that, and we have to consider it as a part of us. And this is the role of art, and after all, to remember us what, uh, and to remind us of many wealthiest that we have losing, have been losing through time while becoming civilized, or in the, in the sense that we, at the world, we, uh, in the sense that we attach to the meaning of this world. So it's, uh, but this is useful by itself, and, uh, and I, I myself feel a bit of shaman because every year I <laughs> summon here my indigenous people to watch this f f fans, very strange sort of pieces of work that human beings say that it's art that wants to, to speak to you. Uh, they are not letter, they are not image. They're, they're, so it's, it's an exercise of going back to an exercise in widening your capability of understanding and of using emotions as a key for a better understanding. I mean, so uh, I feel I, I do really sympathize with, with the shaman. I feel somehow part of the of, 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 of the, of the Said. Still, uh, the, if I uh, well understand the, 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 this world and what you are saying, what you want to tell us is not to go back to nature, but to go back to a sort of collective, the human being as a collective being. We have lost part of us while uh, parting from that collective body of that tribe and becoming individuals and pretending to become autonomous. And that is to me, the, the, so to some extent, the idea that the problem was not individuals versus nature, but individual versus society. I would, I would be a bit more, uh, sim a bit s simpler. It's the relation between my body and the collective body to which I belong. Then to separate from which it's to be born twice, but in this second birth, it's me who is responsible of that. There is no mother which is responsible of that. It's me, and I am alone with my responsibility to have parted from the original body to which I used to belong. This is beautiful. <laughs> I believe so too. I believe it's something a uh, personal individual, and this individual generate this conscience of collectiveness. And the key thing, everything they talk about, is spirituality. Spirituality is the key point to connect uh, to whatever you want to call nature, or infinity, or God, you know. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Talk, we're talking about God, yeah, in the end of it. In, in the Western society, we would be talking about God. When we say nature, the, the parallel to nature, it's not culture, it's, it, or, or in, in the culture, would be God. No? It's a connection to the infinity, to the cosmos, to the whole, you know, and this, in the whole, everybody connects together. Together, we arrive in the whole is stronger, you know, but uh, uh, it's something like uh, now we just listen. I like this thing of uh, the own body, the collective body, because I like to, to feel as the body, as a, as a universe. Yes, we have another question here. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you for um, all the inspiration you share. Um, I was wondering about um, the world of forms and like your plastic approach to building things in the physical world. Um, do you believe there's like patterns you can use to open space for people and to invite people to like feel that spirituality and this um, force you're describing in yeah what you say um, like me being in the space yesterday I could see how the children would really appreciate the openness of the space and use the instruments in an intuitive way but also I think the form and the, the colors and eventually the smells and everything Maybe there's a synesthesia you, you try to find in your work or a, a distinct pattern that occurs throughout your practice, what you might 
want to share or I, I mean you share it in exhibiting it already but maybe there's something you want to tell about this world of forms sure yeah yeah the form holds the content in a way no? yeah. it's like a glass with the water inside you have this limit and you have this content inside uh, what I I felt to have there uh, besides this connection with the the f fact that we will be sitting around now is something to connect the the sky to the earth you know we even put this earth on this corner this square this losango with the Huni Queen painting of the boa in the in the in the center to have this idea that this is all going all the way to the earth to the center of the earth to the force of the earth uh, to the roots you know uh, you know a tree would be uh, more important than anything you know but uh, this was the idea to have something uh, x uh, going up and down and another one spreading uh, the place for us to be around with this kind of conic uh, ceiling which is you know a, a, a pyramid but also a old malocas uh, Queen were like that it's not like that they don't live in malocas like that nowadays they live in a house uh, more like the houses of the the guys from from the rubber state you know which is a floor like uh, one meter like uh, the side a little bit higher than this table maybe and now for the water and the animals pass down whatever and uh, made by wood and then you have the the ceiling made by straw you know uh, it's, it's, a, it's a forest house you know every woman materiality comes from the forest but the old house of them was more like this kind of shape you know like some of them has like that some of them has like that there was more kind of like that which is uh, the idea that is just a roof this is also uh, simplicity now gravity the building uh, it's common everywhere now this way to build so that's more or less the way and the ingredients the organelles that we have inside is to generate this fluxes of energy to make this energy flows around so the idea is to create a, a, a in between uh, form patterns on or, or everything the, the idea is to create a place that we feel the energy around you know that the energy circulates uh, in a good uh, movement in a good vibration or whatever you want to call yeah I think we have time for one last short question so please uh, well first uh, it's working yes uh, thank you very much for this conversation and as an anthropologist that uh, I could participate uh, to the work of Ernesto and the presence of the uni queen here and also to the uh, studio creative healing space of dawn uh, i think that for me one of the most interesting aspect connected to the presence of the huni queen here was the possibility to see um, how this movement is totally in our modern time it's not um, going back uh, or, I mean, could be very risky to intend uh, the presence of the Huni Queen and the Huni Queen in, in themselves. I mean, the indigenous people has uh, the myth of, uh, um, of the... Uh, the original uh, yeah. purity or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. are That's showing... Th these participations are showing that this is modernity. Like the, med the sacred medicine is changing our way of thinking, our way of healing ourselves, as well as the, the, the sacred medicine is changed by all this um, uh, collaboration and international network in which the indigenous people are with us. And so just to connect maybe with Eli Eliani, 
this idea of horizontal um, relation is maybe starting from the idea that we have to break, and this, this Biennale did a lot of this, break some conceptions that we still have about what is a ritual, what is uh, shamanism, what is, um, uh, uh, what is an indigenous, uh, what, what, uh, like, what we think they are. And yeah, I just would like to say this maybe on what Ernesto is thinking about because we sometimes we sh we are shocked if they are uh, they have an iPhone in our hands in their hands or uh, as an anthropologist working we are uh, with ayahuasca my worry is also how we are going to uh, to introduce ayahuasca in our patterns you know and conceptions about body about knowledge about healing and. I, I think simply that this was a great possibility to put on the table all uh, these this, uh, aspects. And also it's, uh, a political, uh, of political importance exactly for what Brazil is living now because they are sharing in one of the most important art <laughs> events in the world. They are here and uh, at the same time, they are losing their water, land, uh, and etc. Thank you so very no, much thank you. for what you said. And thank you to all of you today for our yes. last uh, one of the most beautiful tavola aperta of this Biennale. Thank you very much, Ernesto. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you to all, all of you. Thank you, everyone.